Nation of buffness, we're talking about your metabolism today. How to increase your metabolism. It's fairly simple, uh, this video, because your metabolism is quite complex. There are many factors determining how many calories your body needs to consume in order to stay the same. And the primary factors we're gonna talk about today, we know most of them. Age, genetics, hormones, height, gender, total calories you're currently consuming, and then total amount of muscle mass. And the total amount of muscle mass is something you could change, but it's not as significant as what you might think. And here's what I mean. So metabolism, what is it? Well, it's the total amount of energy your body needs, as I just said before, to consume in a day. Now, think about your body like an energy bar. Your body is in a constant state of breaking stuff down, so tissue, and then building it back up. So muscle, after you exercise and eat nutrients. And then depending upon where we talk about it in the body, we'll determine how much energy that body part needs. So your liver needs a lot of energy. Your brain, you gotta think, it needs a lot of energy. Fat cells, they don't really need that much energy. Muscle, as it turns out, requires less energy than we originally thought. So it's not, you know, per one pound of muscle, you don't burn an additional 50 calories. That's not true. It's more if the estimates are right, maybe 6 to 12 calories per pound of muscle built. Okay, so now we know that all these different components, your brain, your liver, your muscles, your stomach, they all add up to this magical energy bar, also known as your metabolism. The question then becomes, where does the energy come from that our body needs? And this is, once again, fairly simple. Okay, we know food, right, from our macronutrients, from protein, carbs, and fats. But what exactly does the body do with these nutrients? Your body relies primarily on one energy source, ATP, adenosine triphosphate. In order to produce this, the body uses two primary energy sources, glucose, which is carbohydrates, simple sugars, and the second one would be fatty acids from fat. So you got your carbs and you have your fats. And then through another process called gluconeogenesis, your protein can also be converted into energy. So that's how your body gets its energy from the food that you take in. So we got our calories in and then we got the calories out. And if we look at the different factors, if we look at age, there's a negative correlation with age. So after a certain point, let's say you get into your later 30s, into your 40s, the older you are, the slightly slower your metabolism will be. You tend to move around unless your body has a decreased metabolic demand. Uh, same thing can be said about gender. Men require more calories than women on average. Height, the taller you are, the more weight that you weigh, the more that you weigh, the more calories that you need. Those factors you cannot influence except for your weight. And on top of that, the other factors I was mentioning before, your hormones, you can influence that. For instance, uh, cortisol is a catabolic hormone. If it's chronically elevated, it could be detrimental to your body, to your metabolism. Uh, I also mentioned about the muscle mass. Yeah, it's absolutely true. The more muscle mass you build over time, slowly your metabolism will increase. And the other important factor that I want to talk about today is calories. So the amount of calories that you consume. If you remember in my G-Flux video, I talked briefly about calories in and calories out. As you do more exercise, you're allowed to consume more food. So even if you're at a maintenance level, you're not gaining weight, depending upon the amount of activity you do, and the amount of muscle mass you have will influence how many calories you need to consume. What I'm trying to tell you, the more you exercise, the more muscle you build, the more calories you can eat. And if you're not starving your body, if you're not damaging that metabolism by down-regulating it, giving yourself less food than what your body actually needs, if instead you're increasing it slowly over time, so you're trying to consume as many calories as you can without turning into fat ass, so the upper limit of your maintenance amount or the upper limit of a safe lean mass phase, your body over time will adjust to this. What I'm trying to say is your body's sort of like a thermometer. If you consistently over a period of time consume more calories, then your body will get used to that and that'll be its new level that it recognizes. The same idea with people that chronically starve themselves. If you can consume too few calories for a long period of time, your body will get used to that. And that's where people get wrecked metabolisms where they can't lose weight no matter how few calories they consume. The last area we have to talk about is the total daily energy expenditure. What you do in the day. The more active you are, you burn more calories. Therefore, obviously, your body needs more calories. So it's always more beneficial if you want to increase your metabolism or how many calories you need to consume in a day to do more activity. Up to a point. I'm not telling you to run 10 hours a day. I am saying, you know, pick up a game of soccer, get more NEPA, non-exercise physical activity, uh, make sure your training is intense. Those will guarantee that the nutrient partitioning, what your body 
does with the calories you eat, it's slightly more favorable towards building muscle. If you're looking for a shortcut or some diet pill or something crazy like that, you've came to the wrong video. I broke down what your metabolism is, how to increase it naturally, so here are the main factors I said. Increasing the amount of calories you eat as you do more activity, making sure you have a healthy hormonal profile so you're not stressed out, gaining a little bit of muscle over time. Remember, muscle mass will influence the total amount of calories that you can consume. Not to the extent that we previously thought, but it is a variable that you can change. As an aside, speaking personally, I could say over the last several years, the amount of calories that I need to consume just to maintain my body weight with my amount of activity I do and the other factors mentioned has increased quite significantly. So if before my maintenance calories were maybe 2,500, perhaps now they're closer to about 2,800, 2,900. And that's all due to the factors I mentioned already. That's it, that's the video. If you have a sluggish metabolism, it's probably because you're not eating enough and you're not exercising enough and you need to pack on some muscle. Chef Buff Army, thank you as always for watching my video. If you like the video, make sure to like the video. And if you're not a subscriber, fuck you waiting for. Ship up army, my zealous army. I'll be seeing you guys in the next video. Peace.